I'm Barry Francisco, and I'm here at the 2009 Semantic Technology Conference. Siri wants to make your iPhone a virtual assistant. Well, joining me to talk about Siri is CTO and co-founder Tom Gruber. Tom, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Well, as I understand it, Siri takes search to another, le to another level, sort of takes search to a conversation mm. or a dialogue. Do I have it right? Well, it's not really search. Uh, it's an assistant metaphor. Mm -hmm. okay. and, and search is one of the many things you might do with an assistant. Uh, if your assistant was helping you do research, you would use search, for right. instance. Uh, but the assistant metaphor is more about helping you do things like, I want to get tickets to the game. I want to find out a good place to have dinner. Uh, I want to find out something to do. And, and those things, those doing things, booking restaurants, getting tickets, uh, are in a sense beyond search. But it's, like I say, a different metaphor. So we're at the point right now, the virtual assistant can book reservations, but not necessarily organize your son's birthday party. Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is based on artificial intelligence technology, and it also speaks, you know, it, you can speak to it in English, and it, mm -hmm. and it talks English back to you and writes it out to you. So the problem there is, you know, you can't, you don't know. Can it plan my, you know? Can it? And no, it can't. Okay. Um, but, there's, but is there a fine line, is there a strong line there between what it can and can't do? Today, the line is, sure, it's the beginning of this metaphor. Okay. It can help you do things when you're out. Basically, the idea is you have a, you have a cell phone. Right. And the things you would want to do with your cell phone, if you had an assistant on the other end, mm -hmm. that's what it can do today. Well, let's take a look. What's so, going to mean? Well, let's say, let's say I, I, here in downtown San Jose, mm -hmm. let's say I wanted to pick up something. Oh, I'm, I'm missing a cable, and I say, um, where's the nearest drugstore? So let's just ask Siri. Where's the nearest drugstore? And then Siri comes back, and you can see where it goes. It, first, it tells me that it heard what I said. What's, where is the nearest drugstore? And then it says, I'm looking for drugstores closest to your current location. It knows my current location because the phones now know that. Right. And then here comes a list of them, sorted by distance. And then you can see we open one up, and it shows the map. And it shows notes I've taken. I can share, I can send these directions to you by pushing that button. So for simple things like that, just getting the job done, it's like if you had an assistant say, where can I get a cable? Uh, where's the nearest drugstore to buy Where's a cable? the nearest gas station? Let's try that. Where's the nearest gas station? And you see that one. It's the same kind of problem. It just knows your location. I like how it says thinking. Thinking. There it says gas station looking for gas stations closest to your current location in San Jose and South Market. And there it is. There's the Santa Clara Chevron. So those kind of things are real simple, um, but it is something an assistant would do. Right. But this is where you really had to perfect or at least get close to or get really improve speech to text technology. Well, there's a lot of layers of that. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. uh, the speech to text is one part, mm -hmm. but then the text to intent is the, to me the more difficult part. Okay. Which is, now we just said a few things like where's the nearest? Right. And you can imagine doing that simply. But let's try this one. Let's say I wanted to plan um, an evening in San Francisco. Um, and I wanted uh, a reservation because it's a weekend and I want a nice place. I can say, I need a fancy French restaurant for two in San Francisco on Thursday night. Now, if you, you can't really ask a request like that in today's paradigm. No, well, search. you have keywords. You could type keywords in, but mm -hmm. what you get is pages that talk about restaurants in San Francisco. Right. right? And here it says, look what it says. Read, go ahead and read it. Looking for expensive French restaurants near San Francisco with open tables for two this coming Thursday at 7. Yeah, and there they are. There's Chez Papa, Jardinet, and so on. With reservations that are available. And there's one I can go click 730 exactly. Mm -hmm. Reservations that are available. We'll open it up mm -hmm. and we'll see book, Jardinet. Right. And now you can open up a form and you can book it right there for right. our partner open table. Right. So that's interesting. I noticed you also had Yelp. Those are a number of the services you're using. So you're using mm -hmm. a lot of the services that are, that are out there already and just mashing them up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The virtual assistant paradigm really is about doing things for you on your behalf using mm -hmm. other people's information and content and services. Mm -hmm. And its 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 job is to understand what you mean mm -hmm. and to work on your behalf mm -hmm. and then to use whatever context you have, personal, it knows your contacts, it knows your location, it knows your calendar, these kinds of things, mm -hmm. to help you get your job done. Mm -hmm. So in this case, um, Yelp is relevant for reviews. OpenTable is relevant for reservations. Mm -hmm. um, it probably used a few other ones to recommend those. And it put them all together in one spot. This is going to be a free iPhone app? 
and this will be available in private beta in August, correct? In, in the summertime, late summer. Okay, yeah. but not for not for the open public. As soon as we for can the for the open public. Okay. So we have this is the first mainstream, really mainstream virtual yes. assistant in history. Yeah. So it's going to be uh, we have to do make sure we have thoughts tens of thousands of people using it. And how and long will that private beta or pri yeah private beta go for until you feel that you're ready for until prime time? Until we feel ready. Yeah. Is it only going to be for the iPhone or do you have any? You know, well, the technology is architected for the general platform, all the right. platforms. Okay. And so we're going to start with iPhone. Mm -hmm. um, uh, like, any, like any good startup, we have sure. to focus on a beachhead, and that's where we're going. It turns out, of course, this is a giant marketplace, mm -hmm. the iPhone itself. Yes, it is a very so giant marketplace. Plenty to do. <laughs> Why is it possible today? You talked a little bit about OpenTable and Yelp and the services being available through their API, so that's yeah. one reason. That's right. But why is a virtual assistant possible today when it wasn't maybe a couple of years ago? Well, like you said, the services availability, not only that they're available, but there's APIs mm -hmm. for the services mm -hmm. that are available, that are online. Another piece is this is based on five years of research in the world's largest AI program mm -hmm. that generated a lot of research on how to do natural language understanding, intent understanding, mm -hmm. and how to do task modeling mm -hmm. so that you could model. So there's a fair amount of research that came out just recently that we're using, that we're commercializing. Okay. And the other, but I think the biggest picture is we've now got a network with location and time-aware device mm -hmm. with voice input with computing local and the cloud computing environment. All those pieces put together, plus state of the art in technology for software, AI and so on, mm -hmm. gives us the opening to do something like this. Now, the danger, and, that, and that's extremely useful, but when I look at that, that the iPhone and I see it says thinking, it just makes me think of eventually how it would be thinking, then all of a sudden feeling emotions, and so, I mean, is the idea or the goal really to, to, to uh, really make uh, the machines a virtual assistant mm -hmm. where they can really have a dialogue and conversation with you, and what's the danger in that, and when does that happen? Mm -hmm. Well, the, the goal is to make a virtual assistant, a virtual assistant. Right. Um, if, I, if you have a new person, it's a virtual personal assistant, actually. Right. I and mean, if you have a personal assistant, Come along you with don't generally go along with you. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> you don't go along with a lot of emotional contact with your uh, personal assistant. You okay. know, you don't really, it's a professional relationship. Okay. And you want the assistant to, so for instance, if you ask your assistant, you know, should I go on this blind date or, you know, should I buy this house or whatever, it's not going to be appropriate for okay. an assistant to tell you things like that. Um, and, and Siri won't do that sort of thing. Uh, the interesting thing is when you put a product in mass consumer hands, um, they're going to project. People will pro naturally project. Mm -hmm. So it's part of our challenge in helping create this virtual, person mm -hmm. uh, persistent, uh, virtual personal assistance space mm -hmm. is to uh, you know, set expectations. Mm -hmm. um, it's, some, it's sort of like what Google did. You know, Google produced expectations about what a search engine can do. Mm -hmm. They're very high quality, but people learned. Right. And I think the same thing will happen now. It's just that we'll be asking assistants to do things like help us organize our schedules, plan events, and so on. Right. Um, we won't ask them for advice, and we won't ask them to keep us happy. It won't be our uh, virtual therapist, not yet anyway. <laughs> That's right. Okay, thanks, Tom. I've been speaking with Tom Gruber. He's the co-founder and CTO of Siri. I'm Bambi Francisco.